the, the prosecutor right. had said that Adam had Happy done Sunday. It it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the comments. Well, I know it's no everybody yet. Y'all know I like to do full disclosure on um, IG. Ain't nobody on here yet, but it's just me trying to keep y'all entertained and not look stupid. Hi, Grin Gren Grenalisa. Hi, Jess Ralph. You know, I didn't want to sit here and look stupid in the beginning, how a lot of people, they just be sitting there staring at the camera, talking about waiting for people to come on. Uh, there you came by. I might have been in the shower. Oh, was it not too long ago? Let me know. Hi, everybody. And we are just waiting for uh, Dex to come on. And here he is. Let me let me bring my buddy. In. Hi, Dex. So, Dad, come on back around. Now, if it was if it was probably within the two o'clock hour, I was in the shower. I had a late start on this day. Hi. Hi. Come on, different scenery. I had to I had to do a different scenery today. Um, I hope it's not noisy. <laughs> <laughs> now, Dexter, tell us why it would be noisy. Well, I am outside, and my neighbor decided to start mowing the grass. So we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> you better go over there and get Devo on him on the neighbor. It was so quiet, like it was like no noise at all. And then I said, "All right, let me get let me get set up." And as soon as I got set up, it was like, "Gotta get started." <laughs> <laughs> he was waiting on you. Hi, Megan and Quills. Hi, baby. If you guys need that good um, the royal inspired items, hit up Megan and Quills. Got my loan. The best, they call them dad hats, the best dad hats you'll ever find. They're comfortable right away. Like, you don't even have to do the thing where you bend them to adjust them. They're perfect as soon as you get them. Child, why did I say, oh, thanks, Megan and Quills. Hair, or are you talking about ducks? Come on through hair. Probably me. <laughs> <laughs> Probably me. Um, yeah, it was so funny. I had my, uh, uh, my hoodie on when I went to my grandmother's the other day. She was like, where you get that from? I want one. <laughs> so I said, you know what? I'll order you one. Don't you worry, Nana. How you doing though today, Dex? Today's a really good day. I um I had a really good conversation with my friend Jason, who I do Bro Talk Live with. I realized that a lot of people. The conversation was about zodiac signs, and I was really okay. curious your, your thoughts on this too. He he's a Taurus, and he was talking about how like how Taurus are like dominant or whatever, and like the only way to win the argument with a Taurus is to be ready to kill them. And I'm like, well, I don't lose arguments or whatever. And Toy, we've been arguing all day since then. And like, neither one of us can stop the argument because nobody wants to. I can't lose now. Like, we have to. <laughs> and I think Jason is on here. Yes, that guy, Stevie, come on up and see us. When we go to South, well, when we go to South Carolina, I'm definitely going to hit you up because I need to hit a trip down there, child. Yeah. Um, so did, did Jason come on here to prove his point here today? Well, Jason supports everything that I do. He's a big fan of my work, so he's probably just watching because it's me doing something. So, <laughs> Jason, feel free to uh, to speak your piece in the comments. Dex said he's from Texas. I am from Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Fatima? No, it's my dad. <laughs> Tell Dad to pop in, DJ Gary-O. Tell him to pop in? Yeah. He said no. Let me daddy. <laughs> he said no. <laughs> oh, did I scare him when I said DJ Gary-O? Get him away. <laughs> Get Sammy out there, DJ and child. Okay, what did uh, Jason say? Don't know male come for him. <laughs> a fan of my work. Uh, and hi, everybody, check it in. Well, today, probably about 3.30-ish, we'll have our guest, uh, I guess, like, one of our first guests to the show. Um, her name is Thelma Wright, Philadelphia Queen Pen. I first uh, beca became familiar with Thelma. Um, it had to be a couple of years ago. You know, I love watching a good Netflix documentary. So it was something called uh, Gangsters um, on Netflix at the time. And her story popped up, and I was like, Thelma Wright, Philadelphia. How have I never, like, heard of this, like, woman? And I was just, like, 
in the zone watching her story. I couldn't like get over it. And the fact that she lives to tell the tale today. So with her coming on, there's so many questions I wanted to ask her. Um, you guys, she actually, in 2018, it was announced that Mary J. Blige is going to be producing a show for her um, called Philly Rain. And the show was based off of her life being a Philly queen pen. So I said, yes, when Auntie Mary is involved, you know this is coming up, especially because she, I'm sorry, go ahead. When did Mary J. Blige become so gangster, though? Like, she was doing, like, the power stuff, and now she's doing it. Like, Mary J. Blige is really, like, a gangster now. Mary J. Blige, this has always been Mary J. Blige. That's why she fit, that's why she fit so good in that Auntie Monice role, because that's Mary. That makes you sense. know, huh? I said that makes sense. Yeah, just like, um, what's her name on Empire? Taraji P. Henson. She's so amazing as Cookie because she's Cookie. From Baltimore, like if you're, yeah. from Baltimore, you're definitely ratchet. Like I mean, like, no, not a shot against most people from Baltimore, but like you know, y'all y'all had a rough, rough upbringing. Yeah, usually like any urban city, though there is some levels of so different certain people, and I hate when people lead with you know where I'm from. New Yorkers love that. I, I'm from New York. I'm from New York. I say that. I'm from Texas. I always say that. <laughs> you being from Texas, y'all being from New York, you can still get it. Oh, yeah, anybody... <laughs> huh? Makes it... A... No, I'm not repeat. I'm not, I'm not going to repeat that. <laughs> <laughs> That's she getting it together. Don't do that. She, she, she does... Um, Taraji is from D.C. She's from Baltimore. Uh, well, you know, they blend together. But yeah, she's the like DC Baltimore area. DC they don't be she, she a little too hood for DC. I don't never know I don't know nobody from DC that's that hood. Have you been to DC? Not in a lot not in a minute. Okay. Well when you go down to DC <laughs> spend a good weekend. Spend, spend a few couple, couple good, good couple days. Now you don't put that damn thing in and I'm I'm up. You what? It sounds perfect. Hello? Yeah. Oh, uh, I did see. I heard some feedback. No, you didn't. I definitely <laughs> did. Did y'all hear feedback? No, they did not. December 22nd. Because I definitely heard it, Dexter. Well, these dogs over here start barking. So I'm like, let me go ahead and put these in so I can cancel some of the noise out. <laughs> you good to go. But yeah, no, DC, they get to cracking. It's pop. Be careful with Baltimore. I heard it too. See? No, no, you that guy Stevie said he heard it too. You mean be careful in Baltimore. All right, when well, Baltimore pull up, listen. Hi, Granny Exposed, babe. When you Baltimore pull up on you, Dex, I'm going to have to sit back and watch them get you together like like Beyonce and Jay-Z. You'll be humming, humming in the... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> in the background, just humming. Mm -hmm. Don't kill them, y'all. Just rough them up a little bit. And but you guys, you guys don't hear any feedback now, right? Like It, it was just when I first put it in. I'm just making sure because I don't want to... Yeah, no, I'm not hearing it right now, so I, I think we're good to go. Okay, let's get into the show. It's been 401 days since Brianna Taylor was murdered. Um, keep bringing it up because we got to keep everything relevant and in the top of everybody's mind while all this social justice stuff is going on. Um, mm -hmm. Right now, the Derek Chauvin trial, it should be wrapping up on Monday. Um, that's when the, the, what, what is, what is he, the defendant? Mm -hmm. That's when they, whatever, they rest their case. Um, Derek on Friday gave up his right to approach the, well, be on the bench and to speak his piece. And I was okay with that because I'm like, really, what are you going to say, sir? But see, that would really be interesting if he's, if they still like, I, I do think they're going to sentence him. I think they're going to, but like, if they yeah. don't. And they let him get away with it. He didn't even approach the bench. It's just to me like that's even a, a bigger slap in the face. Yes, I mean it's one of those. Um, the, yeah, they said closing arguments begin on Monday. Um, it's one of those things, like especially because just watching him the few times because I can't watch the whole trial. I have mm -hmm. tried to put it on and like get into it, but then it'll be like like I, I just can't do it and I'll turn. Yeah. But yeah. the few times that I have seen him, he doesn't seem remorseful. In any way, shape, or form. 
I thought it was interesting when I first started to watch it. They showed him, and he was taking notes. And I'm like, well, what what notes are you taking? You were there. You know what you did, and you know what you didn't do. Thank you. And he just, he doesn't, at some points, he even cracks a smirk throughout the trial. Now, I don't know if that's a nervous energy, because we all know some people who do that when the, the block is hot, they start laughing and shit. Mm -hmm. Well, that just brought me back to something. Remember Ike Turner? You know, I always go left. Remember that what video we saw of Ike? Oh, when he's like, uh, I'll be, Tina will be walking around the house, and I'll be like, and what's wrong? And she'll be like, hey, hey, nothing. So then I have to speak. <laughs> That's not funny, but. Not funny. <laughs> Shit. That's why I'm coughing now. Oh, what the hell I said? Hold on. Let me try to turn this up. Um, yeah, that's what that, so people do have that nervous energy when, you know, the spotlight is on them, but I honestly, I, I don't want to even give him the benefit of the doubt. I don't think that's what it is. I think he's just a self-absorbed narcissist who could really care less, but this is something that got me going. Wait, he looked like he was very comfortable with saying he pleaded the fifth on Thursday. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Do we think that? Because if he gets convicted, and I'm just saying if he should, but you know what we would basically you just well, said if he doesn't. Yeah. Um, what? Do you think, that's something in my mind, maybe he was at ease with it. Do you think he'll possibly try to commit suicide? Because you know what they, how cops, like you're, you're a cop in jail. Cops don't do well in jail. And so especially you being a police officer with this you're coming in as the guy who killed George Floyd and could have mm -hmm. cared less. Do you think he might possibly try to do something like that? I mean, I I would hate to say I would hate for him to do that. I just think that, like, because of what you did, you should you should serve your time in jail. Like, you should mm -hmm. that's what you should do. I think um, suicide in this situation will be the easy way out. Yes. Um, it doesn't happen that often where, you know, these people are convicted for the crimes that they do. So we don't really know that mindset that anybody would have in this. So mm -hmm. it would be, it would, it would be really interesting to see like what ends up happening with him. Yeah. And I really hope that the, um, like all parties involved, like the prison and everything, they have him on suicide watch yeah. just to make sure like, uh, uh, you're not going to just get out of this just because, because you want to take the easy way out. But I also think, though, that this could be a learning lesson for other police officers, too. Like, I don't think that he needs to necessarily be one of those people that are like, I'm such a bad person. I did this, this, this. I think he could really look at what he did and you could teach other police officers. I did. I was wrong. I shouldn't have done it that way. I could have done things differently. And I'm not saying that we're trying to do something like to redeem him or anything like that. But I do think, mm -hmm. though, that it doesn't have to be a us versus them situation. You really could, like, learn from the mistake that you made. You really could do that. Yeah. But I feel like in his regard, maybe he just doesn't. Because I feel like when you had your moment to speak, you could have said something. Yeah. Now, of course, people might not, even if you did apologize and say you were sorry for it, like most people are still not going to be accepting of it at the moment. But that you could have took that opportunity to set your way up to try to bring some unity back to measures like this. Exactly. And yeah. it's like you said, it you are basically a... Like, basically a learning tutorial for people coming up behind you. I mean, and it, as we can see, it's needed. Just the case in point, 13-year-old boy killed in, uh, was it in Chicago or in Toledo? No, Chicago. Yeah, in Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just an all, and, okay, I don't know what he was doing. I see, this is, a, this is the thing. When these stories come up, Dex, like, I have a hard time just sitting watching story after story after story. Um, mm -hmm. So I've kind of not been too keyed in on this one, but from what I saw, the little video that I saw prior to, the cops told the boy to put your hands up. That's what he did, and then you still shot him. It's one of those things, like, it's it's all over the place, because at one point they were saying that he had a gun and he started shooting at them, and it's just like, so, like, what happened? Like, what was the situation? And then I, I do feel the same way you feel, like, where these stories, they just kind of start bleeding together. Because it's like, wait, was mm -hmm. this the one who was in the car with his girlfriend? Oh, no, that wasn't him. Is this the one that was killed near, like, the same one who was George Floyd's, his his girlfriend was his, and it's, it's like, oh, no, no, that's not the same one. And it's just, it's just really difficult to keep all this stuff in, like, focus. 
And I think mm-hmm. you know, that's kind of the reason why we don't see a lot of justice with this stuff because it happens so much and so often that it almost seems like it's a non-issue. Yeah, and it, because what it is, like it goes, goes to people just get desensitized by it. And unfor- like we can't have that, even though it's hard for me. And that's why at the beginning of this show, I all every show that we do, I always just try to, like I've just chosen Breonna Taylor just to kind of keep it at the forefront of minds. And I will always bring it up until this is no longer a narrative anymore. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, yeah, we don't have to be cued in all the time, but I feel like that's the reason why we are in these situations a lot more so now than we have been in the past, because we are so quick to just be like, okay, turn it off. It's bad. I don't want to think about it. Uh, We don't want to be connected to it, but that's the problem. When we lose our connection um, and feeling empathy for these people and then knowing that it could be you, it could be the next person because it's coming. It could be you. It could be somebody in your family. So it's like we owe it to these people um, to not have them die in vain and to keep their legacies alive. Come on now. Yeah, It's also another odd thing about it. Oh, this is like the final point I have on it is that like the George Derek Chauvin Chauvin, uh, trial is on TV every day. And a lot of people are like, I don't want to see this on TV. This is too much for me to watch or whatever. And I understand that. And then I also look at on the flip side, like, why is this on TV? You know what I mean? Is it is this one of those things this is on TV because people care about it? Or do you guys mm-hmm. want to capitalize on the fact that like the black trauma? Like why is this yeah. on television? And and it makes me think sometimes about like the the reasoning behind certain things, like why certain things are happening. Yeah. Like I don't know, are you doing it because you really care or are you doing it for the ratings and the commercials and the money? Because we saw seven George George Floyd funerals too. And I at Thank some point you. it's like I don't necessarily know if we're seeing these funerals because, like, we need to or because you guys are thinking you can get some rating benefits from this. So, like, it's... And even when you see, like, even celebrities there, that just made me uncomfortable. The one the one funeral, I know, like, and I love these people, Tiffany Haddish, Kevin Hart, and a few, they were, like, right in the front row, and I'm just, like... Mind you, we were neat. We were, like, very early on in the pandemic at this point, too. And, like, they were there. And, like, to me, it was just kind of, like, this is... A little weird to me. Yeah, like, wh- why is this happening? Um, just Ralph said, even though I'm a part of the media, I can tell you stations want the ratings. And, I mean, that's why they tell you that it's been a big thing in news for years. If it bleeds, it leads. Yeah, but, it it's like, just... but it's like at this point, you're re- you really are capitalizing on black trauma. And that's yeah. scary. Yeah, like, it's even, like... like... You don't even give black people the platforms on some of these stations, and yet, like, you're capitalizing on the murder of a black man. Like, that is yes. really disheartening. You are right. Now, do you think it would help to kind of stay on that that measure right there? Do you think it would help if they would get more black people to tell these stories? Because that's another thing, is when you see these people a lot on, you know, on, on location, at the riots, a lot of the times these people don't have really any real connection to the community or just the thoughts and Mm. the feelings that people are going through? Uh, I don't know. Like, that's a really iffy one because on one hand of it, I think, like, no, because, I mean, I'll say yes, because, like, you can empathize with these people. You totally understand what they're going through and you can get that message across. But then I say no, because I think if, if something happened to me, I don't want a newscaster that people are familiar with to come and like tell my story, like interview me and let me tell my side of the story. So it doesn't matter what they look like. I want to be the one to tell my side of the story. I don't need a newscaster to do it. Also, I say no, because like right now, a viral video that's going like big is, is, uh, is, is Como saying that on CNN, he said that police reform won't happen until they start killing white kids. If Don Lemon would have said that, nobody would care. You know what I mean? Like, it needs to be yeah. a white man that says a, says a statement like that for it to be deemed important. But that just... Or they send the bloke in, the token black at the station to report on it. And that, um, and that I wouldn't want, because they're going to be trying to keep their job and stay uniform. They're not going to... They're, they're not going to say what I would say. Like, they're in jeopardy of losing their job or, like, getting scrutinized. I'm not. Or people in the street yeah. are not. So, like... But I also feel like they when they do this stuff, they pick certain people who look a certain type of way and give a certain type of answer that that's not really conducive to like the movement or to like anything positive too so yeah like the safe people the people who well, just I don't want to play the, it safe i don't I, I think the newscasters are the safe people but i think sometimes when they yeah. go out and they, and they do the interviews with people it's just like 
and not even in situations like this, but just in general, when you see like a lot of black people on the news, especially the ones that go viral, it's like people that you'd be like, these people are absolutely yes. not good representations of us at all. Why and are you doing ones, this? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You couldn't find any. Well, they kind of did. Shout out to CNN recently. Can of soup. <laughs> See, but even that, though, like you found somebody with literally a weapon in their hand and then you go and you talk to them. And I like, granted the person was he handled it, I guess, well, in the sense of saying, like, oh, no, I'm just taking this to my family. Obviously not. But it's like there's so many people there that are doing the right thing that are really mm-hmm. there just to protest and just there, you know, to make sure things are like on the up and up. And you don't talk to them. You talk to the yeah. guy with the can of soup in his hand. Yeah, that it's just um. It's it's crazy. But you, you know the guy, that's why I'll go back to that because Thelma is here. We're gonna bring her on, Miss Thelma Wright. Um, but I think it I think that guy, he had the soup. It's weird. This is where like we want to get into is trolling too much. Cause that guy went down there to troll, in my yeah, opinion. I don't think he went down there to troll. I think he went down there to throw that soup at the cops' heads. He threw that soup at their heads or whatever. But when you catch me on camera. And you talk to me about this. We are innate to troll. Like, that's what we're going to. I'm not going to say I'm going to throw it at their heads. But, like, look, I'm just doing this. So, I think the trolling just kind of came naturally. But then, like, to, with it, I mean, it was just paired because Donald Trump had recently said that. So yeah, because he saw that video. Exactly. He saw it. He said, let me go out here with my can of soup. And if they ask me any questions, I'm bringing it to my family. Yeah, your your fearless leader Donald Trump gave them the pass. Well, he ain't nobody's fearless leader now. <laughs> that is true. Okay, so we are going to bring Thelma right on. Yes. All right. So for you guys, um, if you're just joining us, hasn't been too long, and it's Thelma Wright, Philly Queen Pen slash Pen, because now she is an author. Um, she uh, let me go back. Let me get my notes out. Um, she is the author of With Eyes from Both Sides, which is basically a, a, a biography of her life being in the game and out of the game. Um, she's a producer of the upcoming series, Philly Rain, which I'm sure she'll update us on that. Um, and she's been featured, and that's where I first saw her story, was on Gangsters, uh, where they just kind of basically told her life. So um, let's just... Let me try to. I invited her, so Miss Thelma. Whenever you get a chance, you just go ahead and accept it. And she did say, and you know me, I always gotta like Miss Miss Wright. She was like, "No, baby, call me Thelma." <laughs> <laughs> okay, it says she's unable to join, but I'm going to try to bring her on again. I don't know why they don't make this. Um, I think they're still working on the kinks with the three people because this is fairly new. Yeah, exactly. Because it's the same exact thing happened to us with Patty the other day. So I just tapped her in again. So yes. Miss um, Thelma, just go ahead and accept that invite, and it should bring you up at some point in time. Uh, so just Ralph said, definitely an element of game as to who the crew speaks to. Mm-hmm. It, it's I don't I'm like you couldn't find nobody, and even though the stuff is like we use it and troll culture, and, like, just to laugh at it. Bella Noches, if you can't go to Bella Noches, you can't go nowhere else. But, but that was a good pick. That was an amazing pick. That was a good pick. That's, like, my favorite video ever. But I mean, like, like with Sweet Brown, like, when, with yeah. the fire thing, like, that, I mean, like, it's funny, but at the same time, though, like, well, I guess it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just, I think so we really are going to get into troll culture, because we got to we got to talk about this. Like, we play too much. Yeah, we do. We do. Okay, now it's saying she's unable to join. I'm not... Let me let not... me go out. Let me... Let me see. If I go out and maybe she could go in right away and then I then you just add me to it. Okay, that's... Yeah, that's what we'll do. Okay, so we're going to get her on here. Thelma, I'm going to go ahead and send you an invite again. Now hide your kids, hide your wife. That was a good one. I haven't been able to come on. Okay, so let me, we're going to try this again. So I'm I'm doing, I'm sending you the invite right now. Okay. So we should, okay. Go live. Okay, so this should. I think I'm in. Yeah, I'm in. <laughs> but I, I, I'm in, but I think he's out. 
Yep. So we're going to, well, so what we're trying to going to do is probably try to bring him back on. Well, we are going to try to, because he had some questions lined up too. How are you this Sunday? Beautiful. Am I in there? Yep. You're here. How you doing today, honey? I'm doing great. How you doing? I'm doing good. Doing good. Okay. So we're just waiting. All right, Dex, where you at? Come on in, Dex. Carmel Kisses just joined. Hi, everybody. So how are you doing this Sunday? I'm doing pretty good. Finally came out. I haven't been out in about three or four days. I don't know. I go into hibernation or something. I don't know. <laughs> but I'm okay. good. <laughs> I heard that. Listen, now, what sign are you, Thelma? I'm a, I'm a Leo. <laughs> I knew it. I'm a Leo, too. And you know that's our favorite pastime is the, to max and relax. <laughs> I know, right? Exactly. Um, yeah, I, I, I think I'm a, I'm a Leo in some ways. And in some ways, I think I'm Virgo because my moon, I think, is in Virgo. So one time I was told that I'm just as much Virgo as I am Leo. And I think that's why my son and I get along so well is because he's Virgo. Yes, and that makes sense. My um, I have good Virgos in my family, and um, Virgos and Leos get along just fine. Yeah. But that's something I, I didn't know you were into like mood and getting stuff uh done. I'm a, after this. I'm gonna reach out to you and talk to you about somebody. Joyce, all knowing, she is amazing. Welcome, okay. Dad. Yeah, it, it worked. And this thing is so weird. When you try to do three people, it gets really crazy. Like, yeah, it doesn't I couldn't let you get press on. The, yeah, I couldn't get on when you were on. I could see you guys and hear you guys. And and um, but I couldn't. I it wouldn't allow me to get on until you backed out. And then, then I could yeah, get on and then it's you crazy. Would. So yeah, but that's Mr. weird. Miss Wright, my name is Dexter. Like super excited to meet you. This Hi, is, Dexter. This is really excited. I heard that you're a Leo. All my close friends are Leos too. Oh really? <laughs> mm -hmm. And I'm an Aquarius, and they and I don't know oh, how that's supposed yes. to work. We get along like, yeah. great. Aquarius okay. and Leo. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so this is a good this is a good trio, a good trio <laughs> soup we got going on here. Exactly. Exactly. So, uh, me and you were actually talking, but I guess um so many questions, but let's start from the beginning. So um uh, first of all, do you um do you do you mind if people call you Queen Pen or no, I don't like it. I don't like that. Okay. I was gonna ask that. I was gonna ask how do you how do you like I was gonna ask how do you like that moniker because uh -uh. Toya was talking about the show Gangster. And I'm like, I wonder how she feels about being called uh -uh. that. Don't like yeah. that at all. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you where it came from. Okay. First of all, when I was involved in that in that lifestyle, mm -hmm. I never considered myself like that type that person. Right. It was like I'm doing business. I got business to take care of, and I and I would move on the low. And I really didn't want people to know what I was doing. So I didn't promote that or, you know, try to get connections with people and stuff like that. And so when when I decided to do the book um, and I talked with my publicist about, you know, doing the book and all, she came up with that moniker because at the time, Griselda Blanco was pretty hot. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so Griselda was known, you know, as a black widow and queen, mm -hmm. and whatever. And so we needed a hook to, you know, bring people in um, and, and, and to get it going. You know what I mean? To get a to get a momentum going. And so that's where the queen Philly queen pin came in from. And then when I was contacted in 2012 to do mm -hmm. the filming of um uh, Gangsters America's Most Evil for a biography. It was done for biography originally. Okay. And they they tagged me Philly Queen Pen, but no, I don't like it at all. <laughs> <laughs> I already named the show that with Philly Queen Pen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. That that's what you know. I mean, that's what's out there. But but I've been backpedaling from it since 2013. Oh wow! Um, okay. no, you know what no, I mean, but but it is what it is. I mean, I, it is what it is. I can't I can't hide and run from it because that's what was going on. But I just never looked at myself yeah. that way. But that's what <laughs> it's the truth. I mean, you know what I mean. But but do I raise my hand? Hey, no, <laughs> no, I don't do it. I don't do that. No. No. Now, the, <laughs> the, the fact that you moved in silence like that is pretty amazing to me. And I think these young kids could definitely learn a thing or two from you. Because yes. of that. But if you could come up with a name for yourself, what would you pick? Just Thelma. 
Okay. Love it. I even like that. <laughs> just listen, Thelma. I am just Thelma. I'm just. I'm a. I'm a wreck to me. This is how mm -hmm. I see myself. I, I'm a. I'm a regular person that maybe had an extraordinary life. But there's a lot okay. of people who've had extraordinary lives and and who've done a lot of things. What What I want people to understand is that the things that I did was not new. I knew right. quite a few females who were moving at the same time I was moving. We just didn't move together. Okay. We never, okay. We, they were doing what they were doing. I was doing what I was doing. We never discussed what we were doing. We never did business together. We may have been the best of friends. Wow. I didn't know what she was doing. She didn't know what I was doing. So that's the way things went back then. You didn't discuss. Okay. It was not. It was not a uh, uh, bragged upon and, 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 you know, hey, girl, you know, guess who I met today and guess what I'm doing? Like, you didn't, you didn't do that. It was too dangerous. Mm -hmm. It was very, very dangerous. So you, I chose to move different than my husband moved because when I look back on things that were going on in my husband's life, that's probably what got him killed was that the fact yeah. that he was a, a, a generous a very generous person who wanted everybody to be okay. He was mm -hmm. not a selfish individual at all. And wow. the guy who killed him, killed him because he knew he couldn't pay him. He was afraid of him. But what he didn't understand was my husband had a business mind and he would have never done anything to hurt him because he knows if I hurt him, I'm not going to get my money. Right, right. Mm -hmm. But the sure. guy was, was using drugs and he probably had smoked up everything he got and he was afraid. And so he, he ended up setting, in, setting him up and killing him. So my thing was to try to do things differently, not better, not better, but just different. And, and mm -hmm. to make sure that I stayed safe because my son, who was three at the time, had already lost his father. So right. it was important for me to try to stay as safe as possible. Now, um, did you know in the beginning, because I did read uh, some of the stuff where you were like, you were attracted to the hu your husband's like fast lifestyle, um, uh, just the, the flashiness. So when you got with him, did you know that that's what he was into? Yes, absolutely. I, I knew that he was in the drug game. I didn't know about the drug game. Um, but also I didn't, I never imagined that my husband and I were going to become what we became, which was right. a couple and an item. I just, I was much younger than him. And during that time in the late seventies and probably even before, you know, when guys were getting a lot of money, they were attracted to young girls and you, you know, they, they, they wanted to impress you in a way, you know what I mean? And so his name was already ringing before I met him. So when I met him, I had heard about him. But I never imagined that our life would take the spin that it did and us getting together and having a son and getting married. And, wow. Uh, you know, that did not cross my mind. Yeah. It's so, it really didn't. It really did It's so funny when you think about these kind of things because, like, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a situation that's dealing with, like, drugs and all that kind of stuff like that. A lot of people don't think or realize that there's also like a love story within yes. this. Like there's a love story in this. There's a there's a family in this. Like you you're so multifaceted. Like it's multidimensional, and I really like that you're exploring that side of yourself now. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I, I'm doing my best. You know, I really wish that. Um, I think about it every day, and I, of course I watch the news and I hear the stories, and I really wish that there was something more I could do, or or something I could do to try to curb the gun violence. Right. Yeah. It, it, it's really, and, and I really don't think in my personal opinion, I don't think it's about hustling. I don't think it's about you owe me money. I don't think it's about that. I, I, I don't know what, what's going on because it, it's, it's just weird to me the way these young black men, especially mm -hmm. in our city mm -hmm. and young people, because you know, when I came up, it was a code in the street of no women, no children, you know what I mean? Yeah. We called civilians. You were called a civilian then. And right. so civilians were not, uh, they, you didn't touch civilians. You know, even though shootings and killings were, were wrong, but mm -hmm. usually back in those times, it was about something. It was about right, yeah. some money or, you know, something happened. Now, from, from what I'm hearing and what I'm seeing, it's not about anything. 
these people are not connected at all. Yeah. It, it, it's almost like you would think like somebody's just riding around or people are just riding around and just hitting targets. Like that, anger. Yeah, I think it's anger. Yeah, people are just it. very angry. Yeah. Very angry. Yeah, yeah I, I, it's weird. And I really wish that I could do something to, you know, have a conversation with these young people because what they what they need to understand is if you are trying to hustle, if you are trying to get money, you're only bringing heat to yourself with violence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The more violence that's involved, the more heat comes down. See, like they just brought in the feds. Now that the feds are involved, this is a this is taking a whole different spin now. It's a whole mm -hmm. different turn now. And so it's not a, so so the people that may have been trying to get some money, now they gonna have to fall back because it's too much heat. It's a lot of mm -hmm. heat. And and it's so unnecessary and it's sad, you know, it's so sad that are young kids, they're kids. They yes. are. 14, yeah. 14, 11, 16, 17. These are children, you yep. know what I mean, that, that are getting hit and they're getting caught up, you know, in this violence. And it, it, it's really, really sad. It's sad. Yeah, Teresa Reese said it's about, it's, about, it's about no morals and no respect. Yeah. Um, so what advice would you have for, because, okay, so, being in a family, you know, the up and comings, like the, the young guys who feel like they see those older movies, um, American Gangster. Uh, right now we have Queen of the South and um, hopefully we'll be seeing your story and we'll get into that and different shows like that. So the people who are thinking about getting into the game, like right now, what would you tell them? Because at this point, I'm like, I feel like they see those stories and it was like a throwback to the game is different now. It's not like it was then. So what I feel like, and then somebody else mentioned about these, a lot of these people are fear. If you're going to get into this game, why do you fear going to jail? Because a lot of it, that's part of it. So what, what, what advice do you have to these people who are like, I'm going to just get in there and get some quick money. Can you let them know what the real story okay. is? Well, number one, I would strongly suggest don't get involved in the drug game, number one, because mm -hmm. you're, it's only two things that can happen. Either you're going to get caught and you're going to go to jail uh, or you're going to get killed. Like, it's, it's only two options to that game. People yeah. who think, oh, I could get in and get out, it's not going to happen like that. Right. That be, and number one, number two, it's so hot now. It, it, the streets are so, 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 so hot. And the, there's no money to be made. Like, if you watch those shows, they're mm -hmm. all period pieces, they, except for Queen of the South. The, the snowfall is a period piece. Snowfall mm -hmm. meaning period piece that it happened in the 70s and 80s. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, let me see what other one. Queen of the South is current day, but Queen of the South is fictitious. It's based on a book, but as you and I discussed, uh, Latoya, it's it's they make her like a superwoman in a sense. Yes, those things would never really go on. All that shooting and you never get hit and you never get locked up and it doesn't. You know, it's it's entertainment, and right. then, mm -hmm. even for my show, eventually. It's going to be for entertainment, even though it will probably be a period piece, which means a piece that happened during the time that I was involved in the game. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I strongly suggest staying away from the drug trade because what happens is people want to get involved in that game. They want to make that money, but they don't want to accept the risks that are involved. Yes. And when they get caught, they're telling on their mother, their cousin. Yeah their girlfriend, their boyfriend, because they don't want to go to jail. And they don't so know what they're they, doing. They're going, to be, they're going to become an informant, which means that they're now working for the authority. So they're telling on everybody that they know that may be involved. And you don't know who they are until you get caught and you decide that you want to fight your case. If you never fight your case, you never find out who CI-52 was. Wow. Oh, that's a fact. You, the only way you find out who the informant is on your case is when you plead guilty and want to fight because then you have the right to face your accuser. I if never do that. And wow. with the feds, most people don't fight the case because most of the time the feds got you. When the feds come, they got you. So, mm -hmm. so people become informants. And they, and they ride around and they, do, they live their life like normal, but they're, tell, they're pointing out people. 
they're telling on people on the low, yeah, so-and-so is doing this and so-and-so is doing that. Oh, and they'll say, well, do you know who so-and-so is? Oh, yeah, there he is or there she is right there. But they're never going to court. That's crazy. I, I have, never knew that. You have too many forces against you. Now they have all these devices where you and I could be talking right now and they'd be on, I don't know, two, three, four, five blocks from us and they can hear <laughs> everything that's going on. And, mm -hmm. and, and so it, it's just a crazy thing. And I understand when I go around, because I mentor, and you know, when I'm talking to my mentees and I'm trying to explain why they don't want to do this, that, and the other, they're saying, okay, I want to get a job. I can't get a job. And most of the time they're correct. They can't get a job because they probably have prior felonies or they mm -hmm. have a record. And, they, and, and the system has this thing where they don't want to hire people because you have a felony. So what? Everybody makes mistakes. Yes. Even, even for me, I don't have a record. I've never been arrested. I, I have no record, no juvie record, no record at all. But when I go to work and I take on assignments, if it's not an assignment that involves me being a mentor, I have to be careful because I've lost contracts because people have gone to upper management and said, hey, do you know who she is? Right, Do you right. know what she did, even though it was 30 some years ago, and I've lost contracts because of that? Because people just, I guess they want me to starve. They don't want me to live. They don't feel as though I should live. They don't feel as though I should be okay. So they try to do whatever they can to sabotage whatever it is that I'm doing. So it, it's really, and I get these young people, but we, the system has to be reformed that mm -hmm. people have to get second chances. Yes, yes, they made a mistake. I don't care how old they are, they're human. We are human beings and we make mistakes. When I look at my own life, I mean, I look back like, what the hell was I thinking when I did that? That was 30 some years ago. I was mm -hmm. young, I wasn't afraid. I had been exposed to that lifestyle for almost 10 years and that's what I knew. When you know better, you do better. Would I yeah. do that now? No. Do mm. I recommend that now? No. What I did was wrong. God spared me and blessed me and saved me so possibly I could help other people. So that's mm -hmm. what I try to do. I'm not a savior, but that's what I try to do. If I can get one or two people to hear me and listen to me and know that this is not the lifestyle that you want, then I feel like I've accomplished something. Yeah, for sure. I mean, even right now, just like this conversation that we're having, like it's not, yeah. I mean, I haven't, I haven't considered it, but if I did, it definitely wouldn't be something that's on my mind anymore. <laughs> right. Yeah. But, but, right. But also like more importantly, I think there are so many things that people don't know. And honestly, just in the, the short time you were just speaking just now, like there are so many things that I learned that I'm sure a lot of people who are actually considering this, they don't know. And right. they've never considered, they've never thought about it because you don't think about the consequences. Mm -hmm. But while you were in the game that you could speak of, what's the crazy experience that you had? Who, um, hmm. I don't know, because I guess toward the end, toward the end, uh, when my associate was arrested, um, mm. he, you know, we, it had got so big and we were moving so much weight that we started doing weight and, product through the mail, through the mail system. Mm -hmm. okay. The golden rule was don't call on your package. I guarantee you've been doing business with me for a period of time now. You know that I stand behind what I do. If your package doesn't arrive when it's supposed to, reach out to me, let me know, and we'll, we'll make it right. We'll fix it. We'll make it right. We were like a okay. family, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. so toward the end, things were slowing down. That that business, it goes up, it goes down. There's times when you have a good run. There's times when you have a slow run. There's times when you have no run at all. And so we were going through a slow run. And so I think what happened, he got a little desperate and he started calling, you know, like, where's my package? Where's my package? Uh -huh. And the DEA ended up delivering the package and he ended up going to jail. And so I was, I was worried because I'd wow. never been, I'd never had a case before anything. Now it could come down to my word against his word. Right. Mm -hmm. is, he, is he going to flip on me? You know what I right. mean? I didn't know. And so it, it got extremely, I was extremely nervous. I, I just didn't know. And I knew Ooh. it was, I went to see my lawyer 
Um, I, I never admitted anything, but I said, hypothetically, what if? <laughs> and my attorney said, well, did you do anything? I said, no, 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 just oh, me? You no. Know, what if he decides to say I did? And he said, well, uh, it'll be your word against his word. You've never been in trouble before. You know, it, they can make you a little uncomfortable, but more than likely, you'll be okay. Okay. So, but I was really, I was really a little nervous about that. You know what I mean? And then right after that is when my friend Naeem got killed out at uh, Studio West. So things, that was, uh, I mean, up until that time, I had a really good run. Really yeah. good. Okay. And you said you and your run, I'm sorry, your young. run was about 10 years, you said? No, no, no. My run was almost five. Five years. Okay. Husband, I was with my husband almost 10 years. Okay. What was, your age, what was your age range while this stuff was happening? Um, okay. For me, I, I started seeing my husband at 21. Uh -huh. um, he died uh, a, a day before my 30th birthday. So from 30 to almost 35. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now I do have a question. I wanted to uh, backtrack to because now you you speak to a lot of the youth at risk youth who are on their way to possibly going down that same road. Right. Um. How do you? And this is just kind of relating to uh to music because music, especially hip hop, has always been in sync with drug culture. A lot of right. people don't even realize a lot of uh hip hop. Uh, foundations were basically funded with drug money. That's so right. being, and that we still see that today, not that, but just like the celebration of gul um, drug culture. So okay. when it, how do you fight that when talking to these at you at risk youth? Because we have groups like the city girls and I love the city girls, but I know the city girls is a bop, but I'm sure some people are out here really living their life like that aspiring to be a scammer and things like that so wow. how do you wow. fight that you know the only thing i try to do is to give you some advice and to try to give you some things to think about because mm -hmm. i i'm not into telling people what to do I, mm -hmm. I, I, even my own son who's a grown man i don't i don't tell him what to do he'll ask me something and I'll give him my thoughts on it. And, you know, I don't know if it were me, this is what I would do, but guess what? What may work for me may not work for you. Right. Mm -hmm. I strongly advise, especially our women, I strongly advise, because <laughs> we can't tell you who to like. You're going to like who you like. Yes. And, and we women, girls, we're attracted to the bad boy. Mm -hmm. We're attracted to a guy that we know he got our back. He's going to yep. look out. You know what I mean? But he may be doing what he's doing. Now, if he really cares about you, he doesn't want you involved. My husband, I know he didn't turn it over 15 times because oh. he always said, if anything happens to me, go back to work because that's where I come from. I come from the working class family. Yeah. Young girls who are, you know, glorifying that life or that glitzy life or there's consequences to these things. Yes. There will be consequences to be paid when you go out on the limb and you take chances. You may be adventurous, but you got to think about the what if and you got to think about if you have children, you got to think about what's going to happen to my children if I get arrested, if I get killed, who's going to take care of my children. And so I strongly try to push education because when you get as much education as you can, your options are better for you. You know what I mean? Yes. Mm -hmm. Try to, I mean, even if it takes you time to get your bachelor's or your master's or, you know, try to get a job that when you get your bachelor's that maybe they'll pay for your master's or just yes. try to get as much education as you can. Be, but mm -hmm. you're going to like who you like. You know what I'm saying? And, and another thing I, I'm not happy with, I hear stories about young girls, they go to work, they get good jobs, they get these jobs, they go to work, they have a car. The guy that they're seeing doesn't have a car. He doesn't yeah. have even a place Stop. to stay. He takes their car, <laughs> drops them off at work. He's riding around in their car all day long, doing whatever, comes back, picks her up in that car, 
she drives the car possibly the next day. Now she's dead because he's done some things in her car. Yeah. Maybe yep. she was aware, maybe she wasn't. That's true. You ha and, and your children are in the car. Mm -hmm. These are things that, you know, I try to give our women things to think about. That's mm -hmm. not yeah. safe. You know what I mean? Try to find people that you are evenly yoked with. Mm -hmm. Try to have girlfriends that you are evenly yoked with. Because sometimes, I know even in, in my own situation coming up, I have had friends that were interested in certain things that at the time I didn't know nothing about it, but it seems like all right to me. And next thing you know, I'm hanging out and I'm doing this. And when I yeah. look back on it now, I was like, mm, I really didn't want to do that anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so peer pressure is, it, it, it's rough. Yeah. It's, yep. it's rough, but try to have your own mind and your own thoughts and your own ideas of what it is that you want to do for yourself. Very true. Yeah. Now, I do have another question as far as being a woman in the game. And I love how when you first started, you said you always looked at yourself as a businesswoman. Right. Well, if you've lived or if you've worked in corporate America, you know, being a woman and, you know, sitting at that boardroom. And sometimes it's hard to get your point across when you're being disrespected because there's a man next to you that feels as though your word doesn't mean anything. Right. So, given that you had that mentality in the drug game how did you how were you able to maintain you being a, a force to be reckoned with when knowing that your business industry is full of men like how did you earn their respect well the people that i started out with were people from philly that my husband had done business with that my husband was close with and that i knew these individuals had the same mentality that i had which was, okay. let's get in, let's get this money and get out. It, okay. it wasn't to make a career. It wasn't to, um, you know, to be, like they say in L.A., high signing and showing off. It, it wasn't <laughs> about that. It was about staying low, moving low, doing what we had to do, get in, get out. They knew after all the bloodshed and my husband dying and different people dying and all, they, they knew, like, we got to protect her at all costs, because as long as we protect her, we're going to be okay. If I'm the person who's making sure you eat, Latoya, you want to make sure I'm all right. That's true. Mm -hmm. You don't want anything to happen to me, because if something happens to me, what are you going to do? Yeah, can't feed your family. That's really how I got in it, is because wow. one of his associates came to me and said uh, he wanted to pay the debt, which doesn't happen. There were people that owed my husband money that I never saw. They kept the money. Mm -hmm. I never saw them. But um, this particular person wanted to keep going. So he came to me. He came to me with a bag of money. He wanted to pay the debt. And he said, hey, we got to keep going. That was not on my mind. I what was your reaction to, to that? What like, yeah. what, my my, like, my what? reaction was like, what you talking about? What you mean? <laughs> what, what you talking about, right? Because I was living in L.A. at the time, even though I was in Philly at the time to come you know, back here. But I hadn't thought about that. I had a business in L.A. And so when he mentioned that to me, I went to my husband's connect. Now, here's the difference, too, of what goes on now and goes on back then. Back okay. then, we referred to someone that you that was supplying you as a connect. Mm -hmm. My husband, my son has informed me that's now called a plug. Yes. That's a plug. Yeah. Plug. I, I, didn't, I didn't even know what a plug was. I said, well, what is that? You know, and he explained to me, well, mom, that's, you know, the person who supply." I said, oh, well, in our time, that was a connect. Mm -hmm. And so in our time, your connect was very sacred. You did not, I didn't tell you uh, who my connect was. Because if I told you that, then you just go try to get the connect yourself. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And so, you know what I mean? And so the people that I was doing business with, we were like a family and they protected me. When I had to come back to Philly, you know, for whatever reason, um, they made sure I was okay. I would come in, do what I had to do, and get out. I, I didn't feel safe in Philly. It was it was too much bad blood. Too many things had happened. And, you wow. know, I just felt like, okay, if I stay on the West Coast, I'll be safe there. I'll just come here to, to the East Coast when I have to, do what I need to do, see, see my family, and get back out here. But that's how I maneuvered. That, that's why I maneuvered the way I did, because I was a woman. I, I, even though I had people that would protect me mm -hmm. they, at all costs, because mm -hmm. they, they knew. 
they needed to protect me. But I, it wasn't about that. I, I've never been the type of person that, oh, I'm gonna pull out the forces because I can. Or, yeah. you know yeah. what I mean? Or I'm gonna push that button because I can. Because to me, I would have to live with the fact that maybe we didn't win because you don't always win. Mm -hmm. You don't always win. You can have Very the strongest true. force. You can have the strongest force, but that doesn't mean that you're, that you're going to win. You could lose one or two. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So could I live with that? No. So mm. I just tried to move in a safe way that kept me safe, kept my family safe, and kept my people safe. Wow. Now, is the, do you attribute that for the reason why you, today you live to tell the tale? I contribute that to God, number one. Mm to God, because without God, I, I wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. if, if, you know, there have been people that have been upset because they said, she should have went to jail. <laughs> well, yeah, maybe I should have, but nobody told on me. Yeah, my nobody husband. told on me, and yeah. clearly that wasn't the plan that God had. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't God go to jail. God makes the We're plan. Just at the end of the day, I didn't go to jail, so it's never I, you should have went to jail. I wasn't there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, did, I didn't go to jail, and I'm, I'm grateful that I didn't go to jail, but that was yeah. all in God's plan. I'm sure and you that's have. why I feel this is just my thoughts, that I feel this is what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed mm -hmm. to try to reach back and help whoever I can yeah. Mm -hmm. To give you something to think about, don't do what I did because you may not be as blessed as I was. Yes. You may not. So mm -hmm. I think that's what I'm supposed to do. Be on your show, talk to people and say, hey, uh, I don't think you want to do that. But if that's what you're going to do, then pre be prepared for the consequences. Yeah. Because yep. there's consequences. You dropped so many gems today during this whole process. Like, I, it's 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 really good, and I think it's really like decent that you decided to do this. Like with your life, I think reform is like a really amazing thing. Yes. One more thing that I wanted to know, like I remember watching American Gangster, and I remember like how they got caught up with everything was because right. he bought the mink jacket. Yes. What was the most extravagant purchase that you made? Mm. <laughs> well. Miss Thelma, you about to say an island? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I'm coming. I that island, sweetie. So, I, I think real estate, real estate. I, okay. Because um, my husband and I had a, we had a plan. I had gone to real estate school when my son was a baby. And my, my husband used to babysit the baby while I go to school and whatever. We had a plan that we were going to, he was going to get out eventually and we were going to invest in real estate. So I've mm -hmm. always had I've always had this 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 itch for real estate stuff. And my family was always a family that believed in ownership. So my family members owned property okay. and stuff. Okay. Um, so I was blessed in that way. But I, I would say, you know, when I was with my husband, he was controlling in a sense. And and what I mean by that is he was better at money than me. Like I, I just was never good at that. But okay. um I would, you know, tell him, oh, the bills are this much and he'd give me the money and I'd pay the bills, whatever. But he saved the money for us. And if I'd say, you know, I think the house is getting a little small. Maybe we need to get a bigger house. He'd go, oh, well, I don't know. Let me think about that. And if we do that, you know, we're going to have to cut back on movies and dinners and shows and because he would be saving, you know what I mean? Right. And mm -hmm. so um, when he was angry with me, he would cut me down, cut me off. Like I didn't walk around with a ton of money in my purse and I, I didn't do that. I lived, I, I lived off of what he gave me to live off of, but all the bills were paid. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. So I, learned, I learned how to start padding bills. <laughs> so, so, I, so I'd have an extra 200 or 300, you know, to play with or whatever. Uh -huh. so, but but after, after his demise, I wanted to be able to buy whatever Ever I wanted to buy because I couldn't do that before. Yes. You know what I mean? I had to get yeah. permission to do that. Wow. So, yeah, I had to give, you know, I had to get permission to do that. And so um, you know, I I would buy fur coats two and three at a time and and, <laughs> and, and I always wanted, I you know, whatever. I, I always wanted uh, I always wanted I had a Mercedes, but I wanted a two seater convertible Mercedes. And yeah. so when I was living in LA, I bought a two seat two seater convertible Mercedes. You know, 
I, I, that's what I want. So that's what I bought. And so, you know, God wanted things. I would buy those things for myself or my family. I bought things for my family and my sisters mm. and my friends, whatever, we went on trips. And I just did whatever I really wanted to do. I'm but not I would married. say, yeah, you know, I, I, yeah. I, I talk about, I, I love, I'm a sports person. I love sports. I come from a sports family. So I had uh, Sixers tickets here that my father would go to the game or my father would take my son or I would take my son. We were on the East Coast. When I was in the West Coast, I had Laker tickets. So I would be at the forum at the Laker games. You know, yes. I, would, I went to the fights. I, I just, I was just living. Mm -hmm. See now you said you, know you said you don't you said you don't like the title, but that is giving Queen. <laughs> no, I'm just okay. giving <laughs> oh, right? I, but but you know, I, I, I just don't like that. I That's fair. Yeah. You know? I understand. And I'm yep, older no. now. I'm older now. You know what I mean? I'm older and and why and you're supposed to be wiser when you're older. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. so you know, and 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 I think too, because I don't want to glorify I don't yes. want to be, I don't want the tag. Like, I, yeah. but it is what it, I can't erase it. It is what it is. You're right. And what, and just Ralph just said, one of our comments or said, it ain't tricking if you got it. You heard it. We could go on forever and I don't want to take too much of your time. But um, wait, oh, Javon Pearson said you brought urban comedy to Philly. Javon, let me tell you about Javon. Javon used to, I used to run a comedy club. I started um, at Morgan's Jazz Club, which was once located on Price Street in Germantown, right? And I had, what happened, okay, in 1987, I had a big birthday party um, in LA at the Four Seasons Hotel, and I met Robin Harris. I met Robin, wow. a friend of mine introduced me to Robin and said, listen, I got a comedian. I want to come and perform at your party. I'm like, cool. So I met Robin. We became the best. Of matter of fact, I'm still friends with his wife, Exeta. And nice. wow. I, met, I met Martin Lawrence. Uh, Robin brought Martin. And I met Tommy Davidson performed at the birthday party. Michael Bivens was there with Hiram. It was a, it was a big, big party at the Four Seasons. So the following year, I said, well, if I did that in L.A., I got to do it in Philly. So in 88, I had a big party at Morgan's. And once again, Robin came. He brought Martin. You know, we had a great time. Shut the whole club down. Had the whole club. So <laughs> I talked to the owner about bringing comedy to the club. And so Robin wanted to come back. The only times he ever performed in Philly, he performed for me. And so wow. I started doing the comedy shows at Morgan's. And Javon was my host. So wow. Javon would host the comedy shows, and I had Michael Blackson, I had J.B. Smooth, I had Wanda Sykes, Whoa. I had Talent, Hamburger, Joe Torrey. Like, so we moved from, from Morgan's because it was too small. We ended up going to Studio West for one show. People didn't really want to come, and that was the OK Corral, so we got out of there. And then okay. we ended up at the Penn Towers on the University of Penn campus. And we used to do it every okay. Wednesday. And Javon was the host. Of okay. the, of, so amazing. yeah, so we had, that was my room. And you know, it was really nice. And we'd party afterwards. We'd have the comedy shows. And then afterwards we'd have a big party. And it was nice. It was, I mean, it was really, really nice. Yeah. Come on, she said I was not to be played with. I, I told you I was a business woman, okay? <laughs> well, you know what? I was trying to find ways to clean that money. It was so much yes. money coming in. And, you know, even even on the down times, you know, you still wanted to do things to keep going. And I enjoyed, I never wanted to be sad. So mm -hmm. I enjoyed the laughs and the comedy and to watch the happiness wow. that it brought to other people. It wasn't about the money. Because let me tell you something. It was a many a night. Javon got paid. I didn't get paid. I didn't make <laughs> money. But, but these other people were getting paid. And I made sure, one thing about comedians, they're different, I guess, to me than R&B people because mm -hmm. my phone, I could not put my phone down in my kitchen. Comedians will tell other comedians, when you're good to them and you treat them good, they are going to call up everybody. And so uh -huh. comedians were calling me from all over. I was flying them Ooh. in, flying them out, bringing them in, bringing them out because I treated them good. Yeah. I treated them wow. well. And, but there was a lot of times I didn't make any money, but it was all right. I felt good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Come I on. had you, money. So yeah, I said you had okay. money coming in from other places. I had other money. Yeah, right. <laughs> 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 it's, look, look. That, 
That's how you know she official. She said, I had to clean the money. <laughs> the money's in the checks in the mail. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. yeah. Um, okay, so I wanted to ask you, so you're basically like a com a consultant when it comes to this. So I can see why you went over into the realm of having your story told. So how did Billy Rain come to be about? So my son um, lives in LA, works in the entertainment industry, and he had a he has a friend who um, she knew about my story, and someone contacted her looking for a female story. She thought of us. She contacts my son. My son goes and has the he's my buffer to okay. get to talk to me. You got to talk to him. Yeah. And so my son has the meeting, and he says, "Mom, I think this sounds pretty good. Let's see." You know. We had no idea at the time that it was Mary J. Blige who was interested in this project. And so we go to this meeting, this is in 2018, we go to this meeting and come to find out that it's Mary's camp that is interested in my story. Wow. So, um, but they were kind of, not her camp, but the person who was speaking for her camp, mm -hmm. he was like, uh, you know, we don't know. In the meantime, we're already, got our stuff in motion. We had our writers. We had Janika and Jashika James. We had already been with them. Um, and they're from we Empire, our, correct? Right. They were working yes, on Empire. Okay. And my son has a relationship with them. They're friends. And so we were already in motion of trying to do our own thing. Okay. And so when we have this meeting, you know, the producer is like, eh, we don't know. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll. And I'm like, okay, well, that's fine. That's cool. Because we're doing our own thing. So it's you get literally... back to us and let us know, you know, what you wanted. He was very nonchalant about it, okay? Um, another week passes, and they're like, no, we want this project, which they probably wanted the project, but he was acting like, ah, eh, man, whatever. And so <laughs> we ended up connecting with uh, Mary had just, we were going to be Mary's first project out the gate because she has her own, I think, production company, and we were going to be. So we started, um, we got a development deal with USA right mary was to be we thought originally that mary was going to be the lead uh uh which was the thelma lead right we find out later after we get the deal with usa that mary is not going to be the lead mary is going with stars to do the power book series but oh, yeah. she's going to be attached to our project as executive producer of our project our okay. project was to be a tv series well after 18 months and about I guess maybe six, eight weeks ago, we get notified from USA there's been a, a change in the regime, and now this story does not fit into our content. Oh. Okay, fine. So, but see, I like this. I, I, you know, I've been through so much in my life that I'm a strong believer when one door closes, that next door is going to be so wide, you could bring a yep. truck through it. And so now we have just this week coming a couple of conversations to possibly go to another project. I love yeah. that. What you I, know, what I, I never, I never, like, I was a little disappointed because, like I said, we worked 18 months developing mm -hmm. that script. Me working with the writers, the girls, you know, they're they're like my daughters now. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, but I felt like, mm, okay, we'll keep it moving. Yeah. We're just going to keep it moving. Because yeah. now, you know, I've learned so much. It's It's been like it, being in school. We learned a lot. Um, uh, we know what to do, what not to do, what to ask for, what we can get. We got more property. Not only do I have the American Gangster a documentary that came out in 2013. Mm -hmm. I'm now featured on BET's Trap Queen season one, episode three. So <laughs> we have that. We have my book. We, you know, we we got stuff now. So Going, we, got, yeah. we got property now. You know That's what good. I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. And, and I love Mary. We have established a relationship. I have a relationship with her camp. So, you know, I love her. She's like a little sister to me now. So that's all good. You know what I yeah. mean? Even though that project didn't work out, but we will have another project. Absolutely. Oh, what's and coming? I, think, and I yeah. think that's what, like, that's a true testament to you. Because even when you were talking about the producer saying, like, oh, maybe we do or we don't, you always have something in the back pocket, always something mm -hmm. in the tuck to keep yourself going. And I think that, I think if, if there's anything outside of stay away from these drugs, if there's anything that I got from this conversation, it's always one, don't put all your eggs in one basket and always yep. have other things to make exactly. you happy to make your money. 
Yeah. Yep, she's a hustler. I, 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 my son, I tell you, when you, I invested good money in my son's education. Um, you know, he went to a private school in LA, kindergarten, and then from first grade to 12th grade, he went to a private school in Jersey. And then he went to a small college where he played ball and they have all kinds of write-ups about him now. But I really invested in him. And I'm so blessed and I'm so grateful mm -hmm. for him because everything that has come through these projects have been through my son wow. and his relationship, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. so I always say, I would have never done the book had he said to me, mom, I, I don't, I ain't feeling this. Like, don't, you know, I don't want to wow. talk about it, but he didn't. He, yeah always embraced me and he told me that he understood whatever I did, whatever I had to do, he knew it was for us to survive. And wow. so with that green light, I could not stop. You know what Absolutely. I mean? Absolutely. And he does everything. I mean, he makes sure that I'm good. He makes sure wow. he'll tell me, mom, that's a good one or that's not a good one. Mom, we, mm -hmm. yeah, that we should do that. Or mom, no, nah, we don't need that. You know, and so mm -hmm. I, I, I respect him. Number one, he's a man, but number two, he's my son. You yeah. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so I know <laughs> if nobody's going to have me like he has. me. Absolutely. That's Nobody. true. <laughs> mm. Nobody's going to have me like he has me. So I trust him. You know what I mean? And I thank wow. God for him each and every day. I really do. Oh, I, I love this mother-son relationship. <laughs> it's just beautiful. We're very it's close. close. It doesn't even give me, uh, you know how some people have those mama boys, mama, mama no. boy vibes. It yes. doesn't give no. me that at all. No. And the fact that you even had the wherewithal or the foresight to look at your child, like that's my child and I love him, but he actually is my investment. It just makes me think how far, I feel like with, especially in our community, we right. tend not to look at our family like that like our spawn that's an actual investment and when it comes yeah. to generational wealth and how the gap is there when it between the, the large gap between black people and whites unfortunately i feel like the old money whites that's how they always look at their family to keep the generational wealth that's going right. like this is my family i love them but no they are an investment so we can set them up for the future and my loved ones down the line that's exactly mm -hmm. right. And that's how, because when I look back, that's what my family did. I mean, my, my great grandparents, they owned property that came through the family line and then eventually came to me. You know what I mean? And so, you know, we're, we're a close family. We're no different than any other family. We, we mm -hmm. bicker and, you know, but we're close. We, we were raised to look out for one another. We may not agree on everything. We don't, you know what I mean? But w mm -hmm. when, it, when that, when that whistle is blown, we form a lot yes. and, wow. and, and and that's who we are. You know what I mean? That's the way we were raised. So I raised my son the same way. I wish I could have due to health reasons. I couldn't have other children. I tried and couldn't have other children. Oh. I, I wish I could have, but I thank God for him because he could be one of those sons like, Oh, I ain't got time for my mom with that. Nonsense. Yeah. He's yeah. Not. You know yeah. what I mean? And I, but I want him to have, he has his own life and he has his own thoughts. And I always say to him, listen, you're a man, I'm a woman, we're not gonna think alike. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I, I raised you and I invested so you could have your own thoughts and your own mind and I respect him for that. You know what I mean? We're not gonna agree on every little thing but at the end of the day, I make my own decisions on my, on my stuff but he leads me because he knows he's in that industry and he knows about that industry. I'm learning about that industry but like I said, I respect who he is. So I yeah. thank God for him every, I'm so grateful. You know, I told you, Latoya, I come through just last year, I was stage two breast cancer and, mm. and, and I, it, God brought me through that, that I can maybe help yes. somebody through that. It, it was hard. It was difficult. I don't wish that on anyone, but I have come through it. I feel pretty good. You know what I mean? Um, but you know, God has just been so good to me. So I don't complain about anything. I, I do what I have to do. You know what I mean? I, until I can do what I want to do, I do what I have to do. And so yes. I'm just grateful. I'm, I'm grateful for everything in my life. Everything. Mm, this is just beautiful. God, we got, I have literally talked to you forever. And I'm sure that's a good tip. <laughs> well, well, you're, you're my little Leo sister. So now you gotta, we got to talk. We got to yeah. talk. You know what I mean? What's yeah. your actual birthday? 
My birthday is July 25th. What about yours? Oh, you're July. Uh, I'm August 8th. I'm 8-8. Eight, eight. Okay. My father was July 28th, and we got along really, really good. Yeah. Oh. Um, too. Yeah. The, the, yeah. The, best man in, the best man in my wedding is July 28th, too. And, oh, really? And, yeah. 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 Wow. Leo, Leo. Leo men are different than Leo women, though. Yes, they it's are. Something. They're very <laughs> sensitive. I can tell that. <laughs> you don't stop throwing shade at, at, at Dion, mechanical zombie. Um, so somebody, uh, so Just Ralph has a question. He said, "Miss Thelma, are you, wait, what does you know? It's hard for me to read." Dex, can you um, see it? He said, uh, <laughs> uh, "Just Ralph said, Miss Thelma, when you get the show, can I play the role of your fur coat? It'll be an honor." <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. Yeah, that's funny. Yes, and Shakiba spent day in here talking about your best friend. I could keep you forever. I definitely am going to keep in touch with you because I'm going to call you about Miss Joyce, and we'll talk about that. But okay. I'm not going to take too much more time of your day. Thank you, especially on a Sunday. I'm sure you got the... Okay. Um, That's okay. It's okay. Right. I do. told you, I, I, I look forward to these interviews and stuff because I want to try to get the word out to people, like, stay out of the street. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Stay out of these streets. Uh, we really I know appreciate it's difficult, you too. I know it's yep. difficult. It's not easy. It's yes. Not and we are always here. If we can do anything, again, like I told you on the phone, to help spread your message, anything you want to get across you feel always feel free to hit us up hey let's jump on the live uh let's i got something i want to talk about we here oh You're i available. appreciate yeah. that i appreciate that thank you yes, so much thank because you. as thank soon you. as we find out what's going on with the next step i will be back to you so we can announce it and talk about it and all of that Yes, I'm so excited. Sure. You know, we are wishing that for you. We speak in everything into existence. And guys, make sure you watch, uh, tune in. I believe this this Wednesday we talked about it on Well, BET. you know what? I, I don't know what sequence they're going in because they showed um, season one, episode one and two. I'm three, so I thought I would have been Wednesday, but I'm not Wednesday. Four is coming on Wednesday. I don't know what they're doing. But okay. they can also okay. watch it. If they have the BET Plus app, they can go right on and watch it, and you can pick whatever episodes you want to watch. So Perfect. It okay. Be, it may be on YouTube. I, I, I okay. Don't know. All right, so guys, look for that on uh, YouTube, possibly YouTube, BET Plus. You can definitely find it there. Right. Um, also, now, how can they um, buy purchase your book? You can purchase my book on Amazon. Um, just pull up my name or the title of my book is With Eyes from Both Sides, Living My Life In and Out the Game. I'm on the cover of the book, which I have my glasses on, so you can't see my eyes and the green eyes today, <laughs> but I'm on the cover of the book. And, um, you know, they can reach me on Instagram under Thelma Wright or Facebook. I think I'm Thelma B. Wright on Facebook. Okay. Yeah, the book you can get. And, and Amazon, if, if they order the book today, they'll have it like Tuesday. They get it mm -hmm. out really quick. Yeah, yeah, sometimes even the next day. I've ordered books before and they sent them out the next day. So, exactly. yeah, Amazon. Yeah. It's yes, okay. Only $15. Yes, look, and she's not being ridiculous like our boy. I love him, Dr. Umar with the $50 book. Oh, wow. Yeah. Is that a hardcover? Is that a hardcover book? It's a book that's not going to be released. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, that's a mess. That's next time we're going to have you come on, we're going to get you all up to speed on these internet crazy. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, Miss Thelma, thank you so Thelma right, everybody. Thank you thank so you much so for much. joining. Thank you. And that's me. You can continue for a little bit. I'm not going to hold up your day. I know um, you got some stuff going on. So, right, Miss, so that one, go ahead and X out because I still okay. haven't gotten that down. But thank you so much for okay. joining. Thank you. Bye-bye. Nice to meet you. You too. <laughs> She's such a sweetheart. That's such a great interview. Mm-hmm. She gave it up. Go ahead, stuff, Hi, Marjan. A lot of stuff I had no idea about. Like, I mean, obviously it's not a situation that I would want to be in, but like to learn about it and to know about it, I think it's really helpful for me and for people who are watching this, who have younger people in their lives. And honestly, at this point, even older people in their life, just let people know like this is not something that you really want to do with yourself.
No, it was amazing. And again, that's why I had to ask that question about the youth, because I feel like so many people, and again, we love these stories. As the Black people, we love hearing these stories, but I feel like a lot of the youth, they get disillusioned, and they're not really understanding that this is like a tale to heed this story, not to live that lifestyle. Like she clearly said, everybody ain't built for it. So um, and 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 Barlett Anthony, um, to get it, just DM one of us, like it, it, either me or Latoya, just let us know like what's going on, and we could get in contact with yeah, you. Definitely, Barlett. Yeah, just hit it. Just Dex, you're so good when it comes to stuff like that. Dex, just reach out to uh to both of us, and we'll uh we'll get you in there. What's going on? Did you kick your party goers out? No, my party goers are looking at me like, let's go. <laughs> 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 like, we ain't gonna hold you too long really quick because I know I'll forget about it next week. Kentrell. What do you do? He had a new baby. baby. Another one? You know how the girl said, I bet you can't pull me? I, I bet you can't pull out. <laughs> 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 like enough is enough. <laughs> <laughs> what? I, I saw I saw who was it? Was it Boosie? I don't know who it was. It was somebody. They posted a thing. They said, um, NBA young boy and uh, Kiki White are not going to outdo me. It was Chad Ocho Cinco. He posted because he has a lot of kids, too. He was yeah. like, Kiki, Kiki White and, and, and NBA, they're not going to outdo me. <laughs> so, look, I don't want to but I'll bring it up because I'll, I know I'll forget about it next week. It'll be old news. Well, and Some people also, like to talk peace, about old news. Rest, huh? rest in peace to, to Black Rob also. He passed yes. yesterday just horrible he died of kidney failure everyone so just pray for his friends and his family and all of his loved ones um oh i was like so <laughs> what did i write it though oh my god hold up so <laughs> it's delala mayweather or what's her name yaya mayweather his ex baby mama so yeah. of course she's upset like this the girl released a statement the new baby mom released a statement and her statement, God, I love how I have my writing up here, but oh, here it goes. So um, NBA Youngboy's reaction to being told that he was a father was, it, he's going to be a father again, I think for mm -hmm. the 11th time. It was, uh, it's cool, uh, cooler than, than my ice I'm waiting to put back on my neck. It's all good, believe it. I mean, it's literally one of those things, like, it doesn't matter. Like, it's not like you're physically taking care of the kids. There's a post I saw in the shade room today that really bothered me. It was, it was down well. And he posted, like, hats off to single parents. You know, I, I haven't washed this many clothes and changed this many diapers in, like, all my life or whatever. Your oldest child is, like, three or four years old, maybe even younger than that. And she might even be older than that. And to say something like that, it's like, the people were clapping for him and stuff. And it's just like, if you're a real father, this is something that you would have already been doing. All righty, so it should be people, loaded. People who have like 15, 30 kids or whatever, they're having all these kids because they're not taking care of the kids. It's easy to have mm -hmm. kids if you're not doing anything with them. So like, mm -hmm. I, it's disgusting to me, honestly. Um, Yeah, it's just, but I even just look at for somebody who said that and you're, I mean, it's kind of too late because you're pregnant, huh? but we all know he's been ignorant as I don't know what for years now. And this is the person that you choose <laughs> to have a baby by? Are you okay? Like, why? My, 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 Oh, sorry. My dad is saying, like, let's see how many kids you have. It won't be 11. <laughs> well, you know, you already got the bandana, and you are from Texas, Mississippi, so Thug Dex is in there somewhere. Thug Ratchet Dex is there. I don't think I have enough in me to have 11 kids. I think you might have had maybe nine had you stayed in Mississippi. <laughs> it, ain't, it ain't nothing. It's just like the ice on my chain. <laughs> <laughs> Every time a chick tells you you're pregnant, that's a card. You got a card laminated. Take this, babe. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> and then also, baby news Danny Lee is pregnant. The baby's ex, who was causing all this drama, warned with the other baby mom. She was a colorist. All who's the stuff. Who's she pregnant by? NBA the baby. Animal? The baby. Oh, really? It's just all kinds of ratchet, babe. We got to do better. I'm not gonna be nobody's ex be pregnant. Never. <laughs> like that's not gonna work. <laughs> like that ain't it. What you think? Well, did he break up with you because you told him he was pregnant? Like what? What? What's going on, 
<laughs> sweetie, how is this happening? Women, please stop letting these randoms get y'all pregnant. Please, if that's, don't be disillusioned by the money. Do y'all need to talk to uh, Thelma right? Because she'll get you together. <laughs> Women, we got to make better choices. We got to stop this. But yeah, I saw that. And a uh, oh, real quick Bobcat video. You seen it? Yeah, I think that um, he handled it properly. The guy, the, it was a, I forgot where it was, but there was a family, they were outside. The bobcat came and just started eating the wife up. Like, he started killing her. <laughs> and the, hus the husband came over and grabbed him, like, in the weirdest way. Like, you've done this before. He <laughs> grabbed the, the bobcat, like, by the feet all together. It was very odd and just tossed it. And the thing was just like, it was, I don't know. <laughs> <it's weird. laughs> He's yelling. It's a bobcat! <laughs> like, so the video started and the man was super like positive. Come to find out his name is Happy. But he gave you very happy energy. The neighbor walked by. You okay? I, my, my niece is playing with rocks and I'm like, oh, just hand them to me. And she throws them at me. Throw them at you, yep. <laughs> As she should have. <laughs> But oh uh, yeah, his name was happy and he was very happy. Uh, don't be cutting who are you cutting your side eye at? Her. Don't be doing that. <laughs> but hi Nisi Pooh. Tell her to come in and say hi if she wants to. Cause you know you like to play. You ain't on no CNN news desk. <laughs> you know they're gonna be hating on me when I finish. They're gonna be so <laughs> jealous. Like they're gonna be so <laughs> jealous. You like. want this is what you're going to do. You're going to log off and you're going to be like, you know, guys, I have very in important things to do. You know I'm I, booked and busy. I had to do an interview. I didn't want to miss the event, but I had an interview to do. <laughs> I, stand you. I can't stand you, but I love you. So, yeah, that was funny. And, oh, Beyonce, Vegas residency, is it happening? So I tweeted that the other day. I, I saw Beyonce, a, bit, a picture of Beyonce walking around in Vegas. And I'm just like, why is she like randomly walking around in Vegas? My friend who's yeah. actually in Vegas right now, she, she said um, they text her, like American Airlines text her and was like, if you could do a later flight, we will pay you not to get on this flight. And she's like, I don't know why they randomly sent this or whatever. And apparently after Beyonce posted that picture, people started booking flights to go to Vegas this week. Like she posted a picture, people started booking flights. And I tweeted, like, I was like, you know, it doesn't, it's a little odd for me to be on to just to be randomly in Vegas. I don't necessarily think she's in this point in her career right now where she needs to do a residency. Yeah. But I think because we've been on quarantine and she hasn't, like, you know, toured and I don't think stadiums will be opened up for a while. And that's what she normally does. I don't think it would be a bad thing for her to do a couple of nights in Vegas and take all of our money. And, we, and we're and we going to fly out and we're going to give it to her because, I mean, go. Beyonce is in her, what, late 30s, early 40s now. Now she's a mother of three. I remember when uh, Celine Dion first did a residency and I kind of see them as far as, we're like, celebrity-wise. Celine Dion and, and Beyonce in the same category. At that time, when and no Celine... Time, and, no, and no time was Celine at, Dion a Beyonce. We're not going to do this. At that time, yes, Celine Dion was <laughs> the best singer in the world. <laughs> yeah, but she wasn't, but Beyonce, I mean, Celine Dion never dropped it low. She never did. She, girl. and she ain't gonna drop it, bro. But it's a lot of, I'm not, I'm not saying vanillas as in white, but just vanilla ish people, just even kilter. They turn up to Celine. That's, that's she, a good time. She, for them. Celine, Di Celine Dion gives me like Mariah Carey. I'll put them on the same category together. And they both do residencies. But at that time, when Celine went out there, she said it was perfect because she didn't. She was another person who didn't have to do a residency at, the, residency at that time. But be, stop it. Being a mother of two. That's debatable. <laughs> I only know two Celine Dion stars. You know and that's three. because that's all you know. You know okay. You know three. You know three. Um, I know she did the damn Titanic, and that's yeah, all we need. Yeah, but you know three Celine Dion songs. Yes. <laughs> At one point, I was a huge Celine Dion fan, and we're not going to do this just because you aren't well-versed on Celine yeah. Dion. <laughs> best singer in the world. And that's what she said. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> but yes. So at that time, when she did it, she was like, it's perfect. I, I don't need to do it, but like, I can't. I don't have to be traveling with my kids and being away from them. So I'm sure Beyonce is at that point in her career where she's like, yeah, this works out for me. If y'all want to see me, y'all want to come. And yes, we are. We're going to spend up all our coins. We got that. People are stacked 
it's people out there with ten, twenty thousand dollars in pandemic relief money. We out there, mm -hmm. Vegas sweets and all of that. So we going. Vegas sweets. <laughs> That's the baby. Was, yeah, but she was uh, playing in dirt, so I wanted to make sure she was cool. Make sure she was what? Cool. These people this people going to be when you're a parent? No, I mean, well, I'm trying to work and, like, you know, take care of the kids and, at the same time. There's a lot going on. <laughs> so, you know what you're giving right now? When the kid had came in, this, that guy that was on that news program and the kid busted in with the walker? Yes, that's exactly it right now. <laughs> okay, this is how you handle it. But this is perfect, Jack. This is actually great training for you because you are good for saying of um, being in control of other people. And yeah. this is training because you can't control everything around you. I mean, that's debatable because yeah. got, I, yeah, it's debatable. I definitely got it together just now. So, so Shakima said, uh, oh, of course, it went all the way away. She says that Beyonce went to Vegas for her anniversary and, and, and has nothing to do with quarantine and she couldn't be away from the kids for too long. Uh, I don't know about all that. Who goes to Vegas for their anniversary? <laughs> yeah. if, if, you're, if you're Beyonce, you have your own island, which I'm sure she does. Like, <laughs> she could go there for her anniversary. You're not going to be walking around dirty Vegas for your yeah. anniversary. And then Beyonce, you got to think of it, when she usually does go on real vacation, she doesn't give us tips. She's very calculated. Her and Jay-Z... When they're throwing us Easter eggs, it's all calculated. It's not just because. It's not. Yes. We're basic compared to Beyonce. We go to Vegas and, oh, we turning the fuck up. We in Vegas having a good time. Beyonce, if she's letting y'all know she's in Vegas, it's a healthy check attached to it. Okay? She, Beyonce is promoting her Vegas res residency by walking around Vegas the same way Usher promoted his by throwing fake money at the strip club. It's the same thing. Yes. Same thing. <laughs> All right, so that was, I think that's pretty much it, Bobcat video. We got into the troll community a little bit, uh, and we'll probably get into that later. Next week, I also want to talk about uh, crazy date stories. If you notice, that's been trending on uh, Twitter lately. Oh, I sound real old. Sound what? The kids are talking about date stories on Tinder or Twitter. We got to talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I got to let the kids know we're good with their technologies. We with it, too. We are with it. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, uh, Marjan, it's happening. The kid, not right now. My womb is not full of children just yet, but it's getting there. The babies will be coming. And no, I can't send my kids over to Dexter's house for him to babysit. With Fatima, yes, but not Dexter, because you really don't my kids' nerves. Yeah. I can see it now. Stay at home now. <laughs> <laughs> like, mommy, he's always organizing some shit. We just want to play outside. My allergy. Like, that's your uncle Dexter. He too, too, too much. That's what he does. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dex. Well, since you're booked and busy for the rest of your afternoon. Mm -hmm. Bye, Latoya. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thank you guys for tuning right. in. And thanks you guys for watching, yeah. too. Yes, thank you guys, and we will definitely uh, see you next week. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you to Thelma Wright for coming in and joining with us today. Such a great conversation, and we love you guys. See you next week. Bye, guys. Uh, save me some cake, Dex. You know that's my dad's favorite line. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. Bye, Bye guys.